Hello, I am Seamus Dunahu of Eve University, and this video is about ECM jamming. ECM jamming is a type of electronic warfare that interferes with your enemy's ability to fight by taking away their ability to target lock anything. Uh, target locking is a prerequisite for using a lot of the weapon systems in EVE Online. Some weapons don't need a target lock, such as bombs, smart bombs, and friend or foe missiles, but the vast majority of weapons in EVE Online require a target lock. So for example, if I wanted my alt in the Raven uh, to open fire on the Blackbird, the Raven first needs to get a target lock. So tick, 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 and finally it has a target lock. And if my Raven actually had any weapons fit to it, I could start opening fire on myself. Right. Uh, and from my Blackbird's point of view, the Raven is now yellow boxing me. And if the Raven did start shooting missiles at me, then it would start red boxing me. All right, so that's these blinking yellow corners. All right. ECM jamming will take away all of the enemy's target locks uh, and prevent them from getting any new target locks for 20 seconds. Uh, now the way it works, let me right click the module and show info on this. So this Gravmetric ECM-2, as it is fit to my ship, has a jam strength against Gravimetric sensor systems of about 9.95. Uh, the Raven battleship, for its own part, has a sensor strength of 26.40. Right. So the probability of this module uh, breaking the Raven's target locks is 9.95, divide by 26.40 on each attempt. And the jam module can only make one attempt every 20 seconds. Uh, so if I grab my calculator, uh, let's see, 26.4, okay, so 9.95 divided by 26.4, so that's about a 37.7% chance per cycle for this thing to succeed. Uh, so it's not guaranteed to work, uh, but if it does work, it breaks the enemy's target locks. Uh, so what I have to do as the Blackbird pilot, as the ECM user, I have to target lock the hostile in question. All right. uh, make sure the arrows are spitting. If I have more than one target lock, I have to make sure the arrows are spitting around whoever it is I want to jam. And then actually, oh, hold on. I'm in high security space. Let me fix this problem. Show info on my main, uh, pilot, invite to duel, uh, accept the duel, that starts the limited engagement. Okay, now I'm not going to get Concord Oakened. All right, so now that I have a limited engagement going, uh, now I can start trying to jam. I click this on. Uh, that did not work, so I'm going to try the next module. Uh, that worked. So the yellow boxing suddenly stopped. That's how that I know that, it's, that this works. All right. uh, from the Raven's point of view, there's an icon just above the capacitor donut that indicates uh, that the Raven's been jammed and who exactly is jamming it. And the Raven pilot can right-click the Blackbird pilot directly from here uh, and try to lock the target. Or, or at least uh, you'd be able to figure out who it is. Right. And both the jams just failed on their last cycle, so the Raven can start trying to target lock again. And the jam cycle is about to come up. And I, the Raven pilot has reestablished the target lock. All right, and the Raven pilot just lost the target lock. All right. So ECM jamming is not guaranteed to work on every cycle. It is probability based. Uh, as a being probability based, it is not subject to stacking penalties, which is something that I will explain in more detail when I make videos on other forms of electronic warfare, such as target painting and tracking disruption. Right. So every single module 
used against the same target has its own independent probability to succeed. Every single one of these six modules have the same jam strength, about 9.95, so they all have about a 37% chance to succeed. As an ECM, uh, as an ECM pilot, when you want to try to ECM jam someone, you want to turn on the modules one at a time. Don't do a panic turn them all on, because you're wasting jam modules. Multiples of them are succeeding. All right? You don't need all of them, you just need one of them to work. Having multiple successful jams doesn't get, grant you any additional benefit beyond having one successful jam. So you just need one of them to work. So don't turn them all on in, uh, in a panic. Turn on the first, at, at least as, as long as you're not actively being shot at and you're not in immediate danger of dying. But ideally, you want to turn them on, and underneath the target portrait, you'll know if it worked, uh, because this one will be a more saturated color, this one's going to be more dimmed out. Alright? Uh, so if I turn on all four at once, and it looks like they all failed, so the raven can start target locking the blackbird. So from the blackbird's point of view, this is what I'm looking for. All these icons are dim, meaning that they all failed. Uh, whereas here, uh, mouse over it, well now that I'm looking at it, it's the next set of cycles has started. But two of the jams have succeeded, two of the jams have failed. And the raven pilot can determine that just by mousing over the thing. All right. So ideally, turn on the first, see if it here, let me start over. Turn on the first. It didn't work. That's a dim icon. Turn on the second. That also did not work. Turn on the third. Nope. Turn on the fourth. Success. You don't need any more beyond that. Right. You can additionally right-click each of these modules ahead of time and set auto-repeat off. Uh, given that you don't want it to repeat, uh, because you're probably going to manage them manually. Uh, especially if there's other things on the field. Uh, so you probably want to try and jam as many different targets as possible. Different ships have different racial sensor systems. Uh, so the Kaldari, for example, use gravimetric sensor systems. The Galente use magnetometric, the Minmatar use LADAR, and the Amarian use radar. You don't have to memorize that, right? The racial ships and their sensor systems are all color-coded. So green for Galente, blue for Kaldari, red for Minmatar, yellow for Amar. So the sensor systems follow that color scheme, the ship backgrounds follow that color scheme, the ECM jammers follow that color scheme, right? Uh, so you just want to match the blue jammers to the blue background. Remember, it's the race of ship not the race of the pilot. I mean, it just so happens that the Raven pilot in question happens to be Kaldari, but that's a coincidence. Could very well be a Minmatar pilot in a Kaldari ship. As long as the ship is Kaldari, I want to use a Kaldari jammer. So I want to use a blue jammer against a blue ship, red jammer against a red ship, and so on. Right. Uh, the reason we're concerned with that, again, looking at the ECM jam strengths, uh, the gravimetric ECM-2, the jam strengths, there are four different jam strengths. Only one of these will apply, depending on the race of ship. I'm using this against a blue ship, against a Kaldari ship, so it's the Kaldari jam strength, the, e the gravimetric ECM jammer strength that applies. So it's got a jam strength about 9.95. If I were trying to jam a Minmatar vessel, such as a Broadsword, or a Maelstrom, or a Rifter, then this would only have a jam strength of 3.3. It's only one-third as good. So if I'm using a racial jammer against the wrong racial target, it's got a much lower chance to jam that target. So there are four different racial ECM jammers. Uh, so the magnetometric has best, the best chance against magnetometric sensor systems, that is against Galente vessels. Ladar is best against Minbatar vessels, and so on. Four races, four racial jammers. 
Again, color-coded, match the colors. There's also a multi-spectral ECM. Uh, I should point out here, let me show info on the extra modules as I have them is sitting in my cargo hold. So here are the jam strength numbers before skills and bonuses come into play. Right. Uh, let me refresh the limited engagement. Right. So here's a gravimetric ECM2 as it's sitting in my cargo hold, so skills and bonuses don't come into play. It's the Tech 2 jammer. All right. So against the wrong racial target, it's got a jam strength of 1.2. Against the correct racial target, it's got a jam strength of 3.6. Uh, similarly, if I look at the radar ECM, same deal. Against the correct racial target, it's a jam strength of 3.6. Against the wrong racial target, it's a jam strength of 1.2. There is something called a multispectral ECM, which will have equal jam strengths across the board. For the Tech 2, that's going to be 2.4. So using a multispectral is two-thirds as good as using the correct racial jammer on the correct racial target. Using the wrong racial jammer on a target is only one-third as good. All right? So that's the progression. One, two, three. Your worst jam strength is using the wrong racial jammer. Uh, the next step up is using a multispectral, and the next step up above that is using the correct racial jammer against a particular ship. Uh, do be aware that the multispectral ECMs, uh, here, let me hold down shift and then. So if I compare the two, uh, attribute windows side by side, uh, be aware that the multispectral ECM has a higher activation cost and additionally a shorter optimal range. So you can't use the multispectrals from as far away as you can the specific racial jammers. Additionally, they're going to eat more capacitor energy. Uh, they also have a shorter falloff range than the racial jammers. Uh, so not as good range, and they eat more capacitor energy. So you want to keep that in mind before loading up your Blackbird or your Griffin or your Scorpion or whatever with a bunch of multispectral ECMs. It's also worth pointing out that default jam strengths are fairly weak. Uh, ECM is most effective when used on a ship that is bonused for it. Uh, the classic example being the Blackbird. So uh, that's a 15% bonus to ECM target jammer strength for every level of Kaldari cruiser. Uh, all the vessels that have bonuses to ECM are Kaldari. Other races have uh, different E-War bonuses, which I will talk about in other videos. Uh, but basically, if we take a look at the frigates, uh, standard frigates, Kaldari, uh, there at the bottom of the line, we've got, where did it go? The Griffin, 15% bonus to ECM target jammer strength and reduction in target jammer activation cost for every level of Kaldari frigate. Uh, way at the top end, uh, we've got the cruisers, advanced cruisers, recon ships, Kaldari. So the Falcon and the Rook, for example, they've got a 30% bonus to ECM target jammer strength for every level of the recon ship skill. Right. Whereas my simple uh, Tech 1 cruiser, my Blackbird, just has a 15% bonus to ECM target jammer strength per level of the Kaldari uh, cruiser skill. Right. Additionally, my Kaldari cruiser has signal distortion amplifiers in all three low slots. Uh, ostensibly, it's a 10% bonus to the strength of ECM jammers, but this is a stacking penalized quantity. So it's not really 1.1 times 1.1 times 1.1 to my jammer strengths for all of my jammers on my mid slots. It's really times 1.1 times 1.087 times 1.057, because that's what stacking penalties is going to do to me in that regard. Stacking penalties applies to the signal distortion amplifiers, not to uh, the jammers themselves. You put a lot of jammers on a single target, 
not just your Blackbird, but your five other buddies also flying Blackbirds, you can pretty much guarantee that the, uh, this guy in question is never, ever going to get a target lock. Let me refresh the limited engagement. All right. Uh, so that's basically uh, ECM jamming. Uh, there are defenses against ECM jamming, uh, and they're called sensor boosters. And if you're returning to EVE Online from a long absence, be aware that the ECCM modules no longer exist. Their functionality has been rolled into the sensor boosters. The same sensor boosters that also protect you from uh, sensor dampening. Okay. Uh, so if we look at the sensor boosters, uh, it a sensor booster can increase your maximum targeting range, uh, your sensor strength, and your scan resolution. Right. So here, uh, they also have uh, the sensor boosters. Boosters also have their same old scripts, uh, scan resolution, and targeting range. But they also have an ECCM script if you want the sensor boosters to focus on ECCM. All right. So when I script a sensor booster for ECCM then the sensor strength, then it provides a 96% bonus to my sensor strength, uh, stacking penalized, uh, but it no longer provides any bonuses to target lock range or scan resolution. So I've got two sensor boosters here uh, with the scan resolution script. So I turn these on, I can target lock significantly faster now. Notice how much faster that goes now with the scan resolution. But I can also uh, turn on the sensor boosters that are scripted for ECCM. And that brings my sensor strength up from about 20-something up to 146. And with a, with a sensor strength of 146, here's my calculator, 9.95 divided by 1. Why is this taking so long? It's about one in fourteen. It's about a one in fourteen chance. All right, so pretty slim. So even if I turn on all these ECM jammers, like, again, don't turn them all on in a panic. But you'll notice that all six of them have failed. The uh, and the Raven still has a target lock on the Blackbird. So if the Raven had any wep if this Raven had any weapons fit to it, I could start shooting myself myself in the Blackbird. So the Raven could start shooting the Blackbird, and uh, so all these uh, different ECM jammers being turned on is not going to prevent the Raven from getting a target lock because its sensor strength is so high. It can s the Blackbird can still land a jam. It's just that the chances are very slim as long as the sensor strength is this high. All right, but if I turn off. Uh, the sensor boosters running the ECCM scripts, then the sensor strength drops back down to its normal of 26.4, right? and now I'm able to get a, t uh, a jam landed on it again. All right, So that is ECM jamming. I'm Seamus Dunahoo of Eve University. Thank you for watching.